I have a story. It's called The Ignorant One. Now, he was this courteous, this arrogant, selfish fool. He was obnoxious. He was ignorant to the highest, uh, highest power, highest degree. He would even do petty things like react slowly at a green traffic light. Like he wouldn't respond. When the light turned green, he would just sit there in the days. And then when people honk their horn at him, he'd look at him stupidly like, what's your, pro- what's your problem? He would do things like get into uh, the, the 12 items or less aisle with a basket full of groceries. Just looking like looking stupid in the days. And, and when people yell at him, he would look at him. He would be frowning at him like. What's your problem? They looking at him like, what's your problem? Just ignorant. So you can just imagine how other people responded to him. You can imagine how people looked at him. Judging him. Just what could be why you have to be so ignorant? Why you got to be so stupid? Why you got to be so selfish? And. He may have very well thought of them Like um, How they perceive him What type of person That he was And we're going to come back to that story But I want to say that That person Is me (laughs) That's me Fam The ignorant man The discourteous the arrogant, the selfish, the obnoxious guy, or not obnoxious, ob, ob, obnoxious guy that only think about itself, nobody, nobody else. You know, discourteous, rude. And uh, I try to apologize, but, you know, of course, you, you can't accept my apology because it's a weak apology because compared to the ignorance that I, I have displayed it's hard for you to forgive me and i get it i understand it because it's hard for me to forgive i got several people right now in my life that owe me money (laughs) and due to the fact that they owe me money they have held me up from other problems now that i face because i don't have the finances that they owe me so i understand it i understand because it's, it's a hardship that 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 comes to you But, but in all this, fam, I've learned something very, very valuable. Remember the story about the ignorant one. Let's go back to it. See, the ignorant man, he realized that his behavior was unacceptable. See, he genuinely, he's a good guy. He, you know, always, you know, to his family and to his friends, to people that know him, he's a genuinely good guy. He's an easygoing person. And because of this, he, he wanted to go out of his way and apologize to everyone that he possibly offended. You know, as many people as he can, that he kind of knew. So he decided to write a letter. He was able to catch up with three of the people that he offended and he handed them the letter and he walked away. And one of the letters read this. You probably remember me from the other day. I was the one who had reacted very slowly to the green traffic light. When you honked your horn, I I realized I was holding up traffic. So please, please accept my apology. However, I I do want you to know why I seemed in a daze. You see, I was just at the doctor's office getting the results of my biopsy I had two weeks ago. And I was just wondering how I would uh, tell my wife and children that, um, that I have cancer. My eyes were still stinging from the crying, so quite simply, I didn't even see the light change. And perhaps I should have been not been driving, but um, I didn't want to miss my appointment. And there was no one else to take me at the time. Please accept my apologies. Another letter read. 
Sir, I see you here often. I was the one in the express lane at the supermarket. I know that you're supposed to only take 12 items or less, and I had a basket full. Please accept my apology. See, my mind was on my youngest daughter, who just recently ran away from home. She's just 16. I was so distraught then. You see, she she somehow got into the wrong crowd and, and started using drugs and drinking. I was just remembering the pretty little girl she she had been most of her life. I know you were really disturbed along with others in the line, and I just wanted to apologize and ask you to please, please accept accept my apology. And to you, Miss Clark, I'm sorry about what happened at the department store last week. Uh, I, I was so mean to you when you was doing your job the best of your ability. I really acted childishly. Please accept my apology. You see, I had just arrived home from work just yesterday and discovered that my wife, she left me. (laughs) But I should have never taken it out on you. So please, please, please accept my apology. But Miss Clark, she resisted. She said, I will only accept your apology under one condition. You have to accept mine. You see, when I saw that you were being ignorant, I noticed that during your rant, you walked out the store without getting your credit card. And I did not tell you because I felt due to your ignorance that you deserve whatever happened to you. And I'm very sorry. Please accept my apology. See, see, it's interesting, fam. Uh, ignorant. The word ignorant, it have multiple meanings. Um, the informal meaning of ignorant means discourteous or rude. But there's a traditional meaning of ignorant. I remember a cop pulled me over one time and he said, just because you're ignorant of the law does not you know, mean that you're not accountable to what you did. I was driving a motor scooter on the sidewalk. He said, your ignorance of the law is no exception. And I, and I was thinking to myself, I ain't ignorant. <laughs> but he didn't mean that. See, there's a traditional meaning to ignorant. It means lacking knowledge, information, or awareness about something in particular. So sometimes when we think someone is being ignorant, there's two meanings. Remember, there's a discourteous or rude. Then there's an ignorant ignorance. That means lacking knowledge. So with all that being said, fam, please, please accept my apology for my ignorance. Now, why are the apologies, T? What's going on? I mean, you know, what's, what's the big deal? You know, you, you apologize and why? Well, it's because I got something of, of value to you. Very, very valuable. We're going to talk about that later. But I also have some issues that I need to resolve via my apologies the issues is that uh some of you made some purchases from me and i wasn't able to fulfill some of your orders and i feel horrible about that so what we're going to do before we move on to the good stuff is first i need to keep my word my honor and my integrity by following through with these um uh, these purchases that you guys made so if anyone placed an order with your homie Grand and you d- either did not receive your order or you um, and even if you didn't uh, receive it and you had to get a refund for whatever reason they may be, that's OK. Just uh, text me on my personal sale phone number at one two four eight two four seven zero four three one. I repeat one two four eight two four seven zero four three one. Text me what you ordered, text me what your transaction ID was, and text me the email as well as your home address. Because if you ordered like a, something large, then I, I, you know, I would email it to you and I would send a DVD to your home address. 
And again, even if you purchase something and due to some type of error or I wasn't able to get with you and you had to get a refund, still text, still get in contact with me, still text me the information, your transaction ID. This is only if you purchase something. I don't want a hundred of y'all saying, I'll pay some, I got my money back T, so send me something free. No, um, I'm sending out um, these things free to those who attempted to make a purchase and it was unsuccessful. All right. So um, that's my personal sale number. So please be courteous and, um, re- you know, respect it. You know, re- re- respect it. You got my per. That's my personal <laughs> cell phone. So um, but anyway, text me that information. I'll get that out to you. A S A P. And again, I apologize and please accept my apology. Life got in the way and I wasn't able to fulfill, you know, fulfill my orders. But let me make it up to you. I have something that I want to talk to you about that I call the gift. Dun, 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 dun. I have a gift for you guys. Now, the question is, will you seize the opportunity to receive your gift? fam? Now, I've something been on my mind that been pretty disturbing, and we're going to talk about that. Now, recently, I've been watching this show called Empire, and I'm sure you guys already heard about it. And there's a lot of controversy behind the show. And some people saying watch it. Some people saying don't watch it. And the message is getting across this and the other. Everybody have their own opinions. And I won't give my opinion. But what I will say is that I'm entertained and I'm driven by one aspect of that show. Empire. Not the corruption behind it, but just the 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 business aspect of it. I'm I'm intrigued of the empire. I'm fascinated that about one person took it to he he started from nothing and he built an empire. Now I don't like the story. I don't like the story behind how he got the empire, but I do respect and and I'm because I'm inspirational and it inspires me. And that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. See, we sit and we're entertained by this show called, quote unquote, Empire. But how about take it a step further? How would you like to build your own empire? Build your own story on how you created your empire. Well, this is where the gift come in at, fam. The gift the gift of knowledge. As a coach and a teacher, fam, I have the moral responsibility to try to encourage you and to try to help you to understand the benefits of higher learning. See, traditionally, what you would do is you would come to todaysbeast.com and you look around and you'll find something in particular, you know. Uh, well, I just need to learn beats. I just need to learn the swing of the pattern. Uh, I just come specifically for chords and progressions. Uh, I'm here for the drum samples. I don't need none of that stuff. Well, let me try to help you understand something, fam. Would Picasso go to an art store? He had in mind that he wanted to paint a beautiful, colorful painting. Would he walk into the art store... And purchase just black and white paint. How can Picasso paint a beautiful, colorful picture, colorful, mind you, with just black and white paint? You can't even, the only to- color tones you're going to get is obviously a variation of grays from black to white in between just grays. Can you produce a beautiful, colorful painting? With just black and white. If you purchased a car. Would you fill the tank up. One time. Just once. You think to yourself. Well it's full. It's full. I'm good. And it look good. And you do drive. You go. You can go a long way. With a full tank of gas. But what happens. When you run out of gas. You only go so far. It's like buying a car and not running maintenance, not checking the tires, not changing the oil, not getting the tune up. You got to keep your car up in good running condition to continue 
to move forward. Likewise, why would you start a career in training and just settle for a full, just a full tank of gas? Because when you run out, you can't go any further. That's it. Take the initiative, fam. Take the initiative by adding value. And you add value to yourself by learning all you can when you can. See, education, fam, it's not free. You ever heard the phrase knowledge is power? See, society know this, fam. That's why it costs so much to get into college. The government and society understand that it's a basic fundamental truth that knowledge is power. And it's not just going to be handed down for free. You're going to have to pay for it. And those that possess this knowledge is the leaders of the next generation. Because the results that you get from knowledge gives you the advantage and gives you the ability to create your own empire. So today you're presented with an opportunity. You don't get opportunities all the time. That's why they call them opportunities. It's called an opportunity because it don't happen all the time. You have the opportunity to add value to yourself. And, and this value, by learning more, fam, you, you, you can make a significant, significant dif- uh, difference in your life. It will enable you to produce more content, relevant content, necessary content, and much more effectively. And it will allow you to win more sales, more deals, contracts. It will increase your professional prestige, your personal wealth, and of course, your personal value. So now the question is, what is this training worth to you? There's a story about an audio mechanic. He was hired to fix this huge mixing console. It wasn't working well. It it was producing a lot of hum. Celebrities would spend thousands of dollars to receive hum in their final mixes. They was pissed, they complained, and they spread the word throughout the whole music industry that this studio was not to be, not, don't go to that studio because their, uh, their machine is producing a lot of hum in the final mixes. So they had to do the whole project over. They were very angry because they had to reproduce entire projects due to this hum in this stupid machine. So the engineer called this audio mechanic and he explained to the mechanic what was going on, what the problem was. And after the mechanic asked a few questions, he went to the studio and he crawled under the particular mixing console that they was having a problem from. And he was looking at the cords and it was thousands and thousands, hundreds of cords under there, twisted plugs. And he told him to cut the console on and he listened to the hiss and he listened to the humming for a few minutes. And he felt he started filling around with some plugs with his hands. And he started humming to himself. He reached under the console and unplugged a faulty plug. He screwed the tip back on and he plugged it back in. Immediately, the humming went away and the entire system started working perfectly. So the audio mechanic went home. When the owner received the bill for a thousand dollars, he became pissed and he complained that the the mechanic was only there for six minutes. <laughs> so he re, he requested an itemized bill. So the mechanic sent them the bill, and the bill read as reads as follows: for stopping the hum, fifty cent; for knowing where to find the hum. $999.50 Total $1,000 See fam At the end of the day Education Simple basic education Would likely help you to find a job But education Combined with insight And creativity And deeper education See that would enable you To define your future Remember the Karate Kid? Mr. Miyagi was training his student. Now, Mr. Miyagi did something, fam. He went beyond the basic skills that the Karate Kid needed. And the Karate Kid, he just wanted to just, you know, just get to get straight to it, get get to chopping. But Mr. Miyagi taught the boy 
other things that he knew that he would need later in life. Mr. Miyagi taught the Karate Kid things that seemed irrelevant at the beginning, but he drilled them. He didn't explain. He just taught them. I know you don't. Mr. Miyagi understood that you're not going to understand why you're learning this right now. Wipe on, wipe off, wipe on, wipe off. You ain't going to get it. Don't even concern yourself about it. Just do it. Trust me. Just do it. See, Mr. Miyagi was teaching him something that he wouldn't use every day. But what fully come to realize the importance of what he learned when it's time to utilize that particular skill. Seize the opportunity, fam. And sometimes we miss our opportunities because we perceive that it, if it came too easy, that if we didn't fight for it, it's not useful or beneficial. But that's not true, fam. That's why they're called opportunities. But I warn you, I warn you of this, of, of, of a lack of an enthusiasm and determination. See, if you desire to win, which I know you do because you wouldn't be here listening to me right now, then you must seize opportunities. Seize the opportunity. If you truly have, uh, if you truly want to have true success, you got to jump on opportunities the way you jump to conclusions. Don't lack gratitude. Gratitude can transform common days into thanksgivings. It can turn routine jobs into joy and it can change ordinary opportunities that you perceive as ordinary into blessings. There's a story about this really, really rich, wealthy man and his son. And they used to love to collect rare works of art. They had everything from uh, Picasso to Van Gogh to Raphael in their collection. And they would often sit together and go over to, you know, admire the great works of art. Well, Vietnam War broke out and his son had to go off to war. He went off to war. Uh, His son was a very courageous kid, and unfortunately, he died in battle while rescuing another soldier. So the father was notified, and and he, he, he grieved deeply because that was his only son. About a month later, just before Christmas, it was a knock at the door. The young man stood at the door with with a large package in his hands. Now he said, "Sir, you, you don't know me, but but I'm the soldier for whom your son gave his life. He saved many lives that day, and he was carrying me to safety when a bullet struck him in the heart, and he died instantly." He often talked about you and your love for for art. The young man held out his, uh, his package. I know this isn't much. I'm not really a great artist, but I, I think your son would have wanted you to have this. So the father opened the package, and it was a portrait of his son painted by the young man. He stared in awe at the way the soldier had captured the, the personality of his son in the painting. In particular, the father was drawn to the eyes So much that his his own eyes welled up with uh, tears. He thanked the young man and and he offered to pay him for the picture. But the the boy said, "Uh, oh, no, no, sir. I, I could never repay what your son did for me. It's a gift. Please accept my gift. So, of course, the father was grateful. So the father took the picture and he hung the portrait over his mantle. And every single time a visitor came by to look at his great works, he would first show them his gift, the portrait of his son. Then he showed them the other great works that he had collected. Unfortunately, the man died a few months later. So there was to be a great auction of his paintings. Many influential people gathered, excited over seeing these great paintings and having the opportunity to purchase one for their own collection. But the featured picture was the rich man's gift. On the platform sat the picture of the rich man's son. So the auctioneer pounded his gavel. We will start the bidding with this picture of the son. Who will bid for this picture? It was a silence. 
Then the voice from the back room shouted, We want to see the famous painting. Skip this one. But the auctioneer persisted. Will someone bid for this painting? Who will start the bidding? 100, 200. Another voice from the back shouted angrily. We didn't come to see this painting. We want to see the Van Goghs, the Rembrandts. Get on with the real bids. But still, the auctioneer continued. The sun, the sun, who would take the sun? Finally, a voice came from the very back of the room. It was a longtime gardener of the man and his son. He said, I'll give 10 for it. I'll give 10 for the painting. You know, being a poor man, it was all he could afford. We have 10. Who will bid 20? Somebody in the bank. Get to him for 10. Let's see the masters. 10 is the bid. Won't someone bid 20? The crowd was getting angry. They was getting frustrated. Yelling and fussing. They didn't want the picture of the sun. They, they, they wanted something more worthy, worthy investments of their collections. The auctioneer pounded the gavel. Going once, twice, sold for $10. The crowd was like, good riddance. Dang, somebody in the back. Now, let's get on with the real collection. But the auctioneer laid down his gavel. I'm sorry. The auction is over. Mine in the back. But what about the paintings? I'm sorry. When I was called to conduct this auction, I was told of a secret stipulation in the will. I was not allowed to reveal that stipulation until this time. Only the painting of the sun would be auctioned. Whoever bought that gift that painting would inherit the entire empire, including all of the paintings. The man who took the sun gets everything. This story can help you to appreciate that you do not always immediately see the value of an opportunity. The opportunity to, per to purchase the painting of the sun had no perceived immediate value. It was a case where the opportunity was to be seized. The only one man took that opportunity, not because he knew what he would inherit. He didn't know that he would inherit everything, but simply because it was an opportunity. He showed perception in his understanding that this owner perceived this gift as valuable. So if this rich man perceived this as valuable, I perceive this as valuable. Don't miss out on your opportunities, fam. Seize your opportunities and inherit your own empire to receive your gift. Go to www.todaysbeast.com.